Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades, and today I'm going to show you how to, uh, well, show you what I did anyway, uh, change the switch, the power switch on this Marantz 2216B receiver. Um, now, the, the, these switches like in these receivers are nearly 50 years old, so, you know, on and off, on and off and off all that time, wear and tear, uh, the contacts, um, I'm not too sure exactly how this one works, but usually like contacts, you know, there's one slides on top of another, they're kind of like spring-loaded to a certain extent, and obviously over time that wears out, and you know, where the, where the two plates touch each other, there's not a proper nice firm contact, it's kind of a loose contact, and when that happens, it can kind of arc, you know, the electricity kind of bounces in between the two plates, uh, you know, it can be very fast, and it can kind of give an interference kind of sound coming through. More notes will be probably on the radio. When you listen to the radio, you can probably hear some like interference coming through, you know, bad reception kind of thing, that kind of like noise, I would have said. I'm gonna try and capture it on video, what happened. Um, I mean, um, it, I've tried it so many times in the video and, uh, you, know, you know, sod's law, it's gonna work perfectly when I'm trying to film it, but I think I've got a couple of little videos here, or one video that probably pick it up where it happened a few times. I've kind of helped it along, to be honest with you, because uh, as I push the switch in, you know, norm normal people would let go. I've kind of just pushed it in a little bit further and just kind of let you, you know, kind of go up and down a little bit, not so much up and down like that, but just up and down a little bit, just to kind of give you an idea within context and not quite meeting up properly. Uh, you'll get the gist of it hopefully with the video but yeah what was happening i was turning this on and uh, like i say more notes be on the radio really kind of picked up more there uh, the interference you know you'd be listening to the radio saying you think you're think you in some static or some kind of noise coming through the geezer next door uh, mucking about with his drill or something you know electric drill that kind of interference uh, coming through on the radio and uh, it worked quite right but what you did what i did notice and you'll see in this video as i turned it on and off uh, the actual the light the backlight kind of dimmed a little bit, kind of gives you that idea that it's not a full contact, so it's not quite right there. So of course that needs repairing really, you don't want to leave it in that state too long because it's not really doing the receiver or amplifier any good, that arcing, like you know what I mean, it's supposed to be a, a dead solid contact. And uh, unfortunately these switches are not cheap, I mean you may be able to get um, one for your receiver, you know, off the shelf so to speak or whatever, but um, you know, don't buy another second hand one, you know, where someone's took one of these out and received, you know, it's 40, 50 years old, even though it's working perfectly now, you know, what's the point? You used to say in another two months it's gonna be exactly the same and you're gonna run around looking for another one. And these switches ain't cheap, even second hand. So I'm um, lucky enough, if you do a little search, there is uh, places you can buy these. I mean, I think I've got this one from Germany somewhere. Like I say, not cheap with the postage and everything, here to the UK, worked out about 31 pound. Uh, for a switch, you're thinking, you know, it's quite expensive really, but uh, not much choice. If you want to get it back running as normal, you know, nice receiver like this, nice sounding receiver, um, you're going to have to pay up for it kind of thing and get it fixed. And it's, it's not an odd job really. Uh, in this particular case, just a matter of six wires and a couple of components uh, actually uh, soldered on the switch. I'll go through that with a video anyway. But anyway, let's just show you that video of me turning shared some emotional news on GMB earlier that Derek has arrived home. Oh Kate, we're all so happy for you. Everyone at Smooth will continue to be behind you throughout your journey. You are an incredible woman. An inc right, hopefully you got the idea of that on and off. I'm trying to demonstrate, it's not always easy, but I think you're going to have an idea yourself if you've got your own amplifier receiver and you've been going to it for years and years or whatever and you turned it on it comes on perfectly like and you turn it off and it all sounds lovely but all of a sudden with this one I went to turn it on and it kind of gave that little bit of noise as I turned it on, that little bit of interference coming. The, the lights dimmed a little bit and kind of, they kind of come on dimming and suddenly burst into action, so to speak, a little bit brighter. And it kind of gave me the idea that something weren't quite right. And what also I did do is just, you know, while, while it was on, I just pushed the switch in a little bit more and just wiggled it about. And it kind of, I could hear that, you know, something was not quite right there. They weren't making proper contact. So time to change the switch. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you some pictures uh, of me undoing it. I think it's the easiest way rather than video, getting all the angles and everything. But so uh, you're going to get an idea uh, of me undoing it and uh, actually changing the switch. So first of all, we're going to undo these first, th th sorry, these top four screws at the top. These four screws come undone. Then we're going to undo the two side screws, uh, each side, so that's another four screws out. And we're going to take the bottom panel off as well. So we've got plenty of room. We're going to have to get that bottom panel off to get in there properly. Uh, we're going to take the front knobs off. They just all, you know, you just grab hold them and pull them off the knobs. And these four little bolts shown in red, uh, they come undone. And that front panel are pulled completely off. 
Uh, and as you can see now, I'm looking through the top and um, there you can see the switch uh, in that black box with the orange capacitor, uh, you know, in that, inside that black box of kind of like uh, shown there. Um, there's the switching capacitor. We're gonna take that complete unit out. To do that, we're gonna have to undo these two screws here holding the switch in on the front panel. Them two screws come undone like that. And we'll take out and have a look at the switch. Uh, while we've got it out, I think, you know, straight away is get your camera out, your phone, etc. Just take a few pictures at a few different angles so you know where all the wires go, just in case. You know, not that they're going to fall off or anything, but just in case, you know, you forget later on to do it or whatever. Always best to do it straight away. But we're going to do a little diagram as well, just to, uh, you know, make sure we've got everything where it is. What I'm going to do here also is just to make sure that we put these back exactly as they were, because there's two uh, brown wires and there's two uh, blue wires, as you can see there on that switch. I'm going to put a little mark on one of them wires on each. Uh, as you can see, I've done it there uh, with the yellow arrows. So I've made a little red, uh, sorry, a blue mark uh, on the brown wire and a blue mark on the blue wire. And uh, both them marks are going to go to the pin two, the center, the sort of center pin of that switch. You'll see what I mean when I show you a, a diagram in a minute. But just to, you know, they, that's where they go. Rather than at the top, I could get, get them the wrong way around. Just going to make sure I put these exactly as I took it out. Same with capacitors there. On the side i mean these can go in either way around obviously they're going the same place but you can put them either way around no polarity or anything uh, no positive or negative from these but we're just going to do it just you know just a matter of course kind of thing we're going to little put a little mark on them little blue mark on them as well so we know that they go to the center tab of the new switch right so here's the diagram now of that switch what i've done is drawn where them wires were uh, as you can see uh, my like freehand drawing at the top yeah, it shows the brown wire pin one, the brown wire with a little bit, which is arrowed up with a little cross net, you know, near the brown. That's just showing me that's the one I marked up in blue. Then I've got the blue wire on the other side, pin number three, and pin number four, the blue wire there, arrowed again with a like little cross on it, uh, showing me that's where the blue wire marked up with the blue felt, which is uh, shown there on the uh, left hand side. Uh, I marked it with that just to um, say that goes there, and as you can see, uh, I'm going to put the capacitors. Uh, exactly where they should be as well. I've got that little mark on the capacitors as well. The white and green wire is shown with pin five and six on that free end diagram. Right at the bottom of that diagram is the actual switch. You can see that's the new switch, that kind of greeny blue colour switch there. And I've labelled it up one, two, three, four, five and six. One thing you will notice is that two pins are missing on that switch uh, when you compare it to the uh, top diagram. Uh, the pin under pin two and the pin under under pin four are both missing. It doesn't matter with this switch. I mean, this is a perfect replacement. We're not going to be using them two pins, so it's fine. So what we're going to do, we're going to, you know, we're going to undo the old wires, and we're going to put them back. So the brown wire uh, pin one goes to pin one of the new switch. The brown wire pin two, uh, which I've put that little mark on, don't forget, is going to go to pin two of the switch, and so with the blue wires and with the white and green wire as well, they're going to go to pin five and six respectively. So um, now we can actually start undoing the wires and uh, taking them off and taking the components off. Now, you will find, you know, th this is gonna be a bit tricky. These wires sometimes are put in and they're wound around a few times, same with the component. So what I normally do is try and take the wires out first, is just put, you know, as much, th these wires are pretty good to be honest with you in here. They the, the shielding of them, the, the, the plastic coating around the side doesn't seem to you know, suddenly melt and disappear. You'll get an idea when you do the first wire. So just be a bit careful. If it starts melting, then obviously you want to be as quick as possible. Now you could snip these wires, but these are pretty tight, these wires, and I didn't want to snip them. Uh, though I could have done if I really got stuck, I suppose. There's a little bit of give, maybe, but you may find some of these components in here, there's hardly any give. Once they put a switch in, they kind of harness it up. Everything, everything's pretty tight. So I actually went to take the wires completely out. And what I do with this is, I, like I say, eat, eat, eat one of the sides here with a soldering iron, one of the pins. Uh, as hot as I can get it, because it doesn't matter about this switch, we're going to sling this anyway, and just start wiggling the wire around as it's hot, and it's obviously going to cool down and reapply the uh, solder line back to it and wiggle it about, and finally the wire will come out, uh, then you can take the component out, I think it's easier that way, because these components can be wound in there as well, so I usually go with the wire, but I mean, whatever way you do it, it's, it's going to be fine, you know what I mean, you know, you'll get used to your own way, saying that you're probably only going to replace this once, but if you're doing it continuously, obviously you've got your own way, and I'm teaching to suck eggs really, but um, you know, just for anyone doing it first time, I kind of take the wire out first if I can, because you do find it, you know, quite uh, wound around. Okay, so with all the wires off, uh, we're gonna, you know, I've got to say one for one, basically, pin for pin, we're gonna put the new new uh, switch in there. 
So as you can see now, the new switch is in. Uh, it's still hanging out, but uh, there you go. It's all wired up there. So now I'm actually going to push it into position where it should be. Um, and there it is. Now it's back in the unit. So um, I'm, I'm just going to um, show you a little test video I've done here afterwards. So if I just show you that video of it back in action now with the new switch. Right, hopefully you see there in that video, it all comes on nicely now. And I did muck about with the switch quite a bit on and off, on and off, and pushing it in and out slowly and all that kind of thing. And there's no more arguing. I mean, it's making a solid contact, that new switch. And one good thing is that it fits nicely. You know, you have to take this little, uh, little silver button thing off the old one, obviously, to put it on the new one. It all fits nicely. It's exactly the same protruding out as it used to be. It's not sticking out like some of these old, you know, you can replace some of these switches and that button could be sticking out an inch or something like that. It's exactly as it was. And if I didn't tell you you've had a new switch fitted, you, you wouldn't know like you would me. So definitely worth, you know, if you've got one of these amplifiers and receivers and you, you feel it's on the way out, you know, it's definitely biting a bullet. I know some of these can be expensive, like say 30 pound for a new one. You can get lucky 10 and 12 pound. It really depends. This is a little bit of a special one where it's actually kind of got two switches on one kind of barrel, so to speak. Um, but um, yeah, you know, definitely, you know, tr you know, try and replace it yourself or get something to replace it. It's going to prolong the life of your, your receiver or amplifier. Okay, I've got a few other little videos and uh, maybe um, uh, a chit chat kind of thing that I thought of uh, while mucking about with a little amplifier. But until the next video, I'll say thank you all for watching and I'll see you all soon.